Now that schools in America have sent warning letters home to parents, the great clown panic of 2016 can no longer be ignored. Across the nation, and indeed across the world, lurk incredibly creepy clowns. To help you make sense of this dire situation, here's what you need to know, and how scared you should be. Sit back and relax, my dear friends, with your favorite drink, because it's time to listen. So, what is happening? How did this all start? The creepy clown craze all started in South Carolina. Back in the middle of August, there were reports of clowns who were lurking in the woods outside the town of Greenville. One woman filed a report with the sheriff because her son saw clowns in the woods, whispering and making strange noises, according to the incident report. At the time, it seemed like one of those weird story of the week things. However, that was just the catalyst for local news hysteria across the nation. Since that initial clown incident, there have been a rash of clown sightings, almost certainly due to copycat pranksters who have a bad sense of humor and decided to start celebrating Halloween early. Here are just a few examples. A man in Kentucky was arrested for dressing up as a clown and hiding in the woods. In Alabama, a woman called 911 because she was terrified after seeing a man dressed like a clown in a Walmart parking lot. Schools in Ohio were closed. A clown in New York chased a teen out of the subway. There have been sightings in California, Texas, Florida, Colorado, and more. And of course, each sighting brings more attention to the phenomenon. Notably, the clown panic has even been mentioned by those connected to the highest office in the land. During a recent White House briefing, Press Secretary Josh Earnest said that he wasn't sure if the president had been notified of the issue. He did note that this is a situation that local law enforcement authorities take quite seriously, which is probably his way of saying, try to get some sleep. So. Are all these sightings real? To make sense of things, let's go back to the start. The first person to spot a clown, the patient zero in the current epidemic of threatening clown sightings spreading across the US, was that little boy at a low-income apartment complex in Greenville, South Carolina. He ran to his mother, Donna Arnold, and told her what he'd seen two clowns in the woods, both brightly dressed and made up, one with a red fright wig and the other with a black star painted on his face. They whispered something to the boy. They were trying to lure him to the house, his mother told him, pointing toward the woods. A path into the woods led down into a shaded hollow at the bottom of which was a small pond. Beside it sat a house that seemed abandoned. Someone had boarded up the windows and the balcony sacked. New bags of potting soil sat near the basement door, though, and a modern security system looked recently installed. After sunset, a car approached the house, a gleaming white new model Mercedes that looked as out of place as any clown car. The driver stepped out and said she'd recently bought the old house as an investment. Yes, she had heard about the clown sightings, but she didn't believe they were real. Donna Arnold's apartment backed up to the same patch of overgrown woods where the clowns had appeared, and which overlooked the old house. Arnold pointed to a dented spot on her door, where the paint had recently been chipped away. 
The clowns hit it with a chain, she said, with complete conviction. I saw them. They hid it and ran off into the woods just as I came out. They're trying to scare us. From this patch of woods, the word of prowling clowns began to spread. On the other side of Greenville first, then down in South Carolina's low country, then North Carolina, Florida, Kentucky, beyond the South to Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and New York, across the oceans to the United Kingdom and Australia, and finally, my little girl's school. I recently received an automated call from my daughter's school in Fairhope, Alabama. It was intended to calm parents, but the missing details spoke more sharply than the ones included. Hi, this is Fairhope Middle School calling with an important message. The cheerful voice began. Please rest assured that your students are safe and the school is taking necessary precautions due to rumored activity. The school perimeter is secured and the police are on campus. Hmm. The call was meant to prevent worried parents from calling the school. I called. The woman who answered hesitated to describe what had happened. Well, it's... she said. It's the clowns. Apparently, the alarm had started in a neighboring county, where two schools had gone into lockdown after disturbing threats from someone calling himself Flomo Clown. Flomo had a Facebook page. The picture showed a balding clown with red stringy hair and a rubber nose. His shirt was drenched in blood. His bio read simply, I kill people for a living. Flomo made posts targeting a specific town. Flomaton, Alabama. Along with more gory clown photos and little gun and knife emojis. Basically, people flipped out. I rebuke this evil in the name of Jesus. You are from the pits of hell. A local woman wrote on Flomo's page. Everyone let us pray as believers over this act of evil against us. She immediately followed through by writing a lengthy, heartfelt, terrified Facebook prayer. Some people appealed to heaven. Some speculated on the best ammunition to bring down a clown. Some advocated restraint. Maybe just paintballs. <laughs> and others reach for 45 caliber pistols. All of this might seem silly, but something about the arched eyebrows and garish smile skipped a signal right to the base of people's brains. They had lost all capacity for critical thought. After Flomo's scary posts, police locked down the schools and swept classrooms for clown-related evidence. Within minutes, the fear spread to other schools, particularly middle schools, where kids were old enough to access social media, but still young enough to hyperventilate over clowns. The picture showed a clown with red, stringy hair and a rubber nose. That afternoon, back in my town, Fairhope, students sprinted through the hallways from one classroom to the next. In class, they stared at cell phones and traded stories about how Flomo Clown had killed two boys in Flomaton and was now moving from school to school. Good grief, teacher Kendra Small said. Please save me from being trapped in a school with middle schoolers who are sure clowns are coming to get them. It started as a satisfying teenage drama but spiraled into something serious enough to warrant calling the police to make sure the perimeter is secured. Later, I showed my 13-year-old daughter a picture of a young woman. Who is this? she said. Please say, that's Flomo Clown, I told her. 
Her real name is Michaela Smith. She's 22, and police in Flummerton arrested her and two juveniles for allegedly making terrorist threats as Flummer. My daughter studied the photo with forensic intensity, almost touching it with her nose. But she seems like a normal person, she said. The man who answered the door at Smith's last known address said he didn't know her, and Smith is banned from using any internet-capable electronics while she's on bond. Her friends didn't respond to requests for help reaching her, but her Facebook page outlines clearly enough her life beginning to spin. In September, she posted a picture of a positive pregnancy test and a block of enigmatic text. Well, everyone, I have some news to announce. It's scary yet exciting. It looks like around May 2017, I'll have a little one of my own. The reason I say it's scary is because of what happened in 2011. And after that, I really thought I couldn't have any more. I'm so nervous about this, but I've been taking things day by day. Please don't judge or say anything out of the way. Two days later, she allegedly created the Flomo Clown persona and posted, I love kids. Now, reports of scary clowns have come and gone every few years. This time though, the rumors seem to have reached such a velocity that they have escaped the orbit of imagination and landed in real life. In Kentucky, police recently arrested a 20-year-old man hiding in a ditch wearing a clown costume. Police in Virginia arrested two teens for wearing clown outfits and chasing children. Meanwhile, in North Carolina, police arrested a man for falsely claiming he'd seen a clown trying to lure children and chased it into the woods. He'd made it all up, he told police. So, Flomo the Clown, there lie the origins of the creepy clown craze. But do we need to be worried? Are we safe? Let's look at this in a bit more detail. Well, it's likely most people really did see a clown lurking in the woods. But we also know that people claim to see things all the time that they probably didn't. Like Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster. What's more, this isn't the first time there's been a clown scare either. There was one back in 1981. So, how big a problem is this really? Should we be losing sleep? Quite simply, no. Seeing a clown wielding a knife would scare anyone. And as pranks go, this one isn't funny. But in the grand scheme of things, a hundred sightings is not that big of a deal. You know what kills 400,000 people each year? Global warming. Cars are also far more dangerous than clowns. And that hasn't keep people from using them. At some universities in America, students have become vigilante clown hunters. Now, is that really necessary? Could this just be one of those newfangled viral marketing techniques? Well, at least one creepy video has turned out to be a viral marketing stunt. So it's possible that some of this is in fact viral marketing. But it's unlikely that every sighting, or even most, have been planned by a publicity firm. Why is that? Well, because at some point, viral marketing has to actually sell something. Has anyone actually been hurt by these clowns? Well, as far as is known, nobody who has reported seeing a clown has been seriously hurt. That said, a teenager wearing a clown mask was stabbed to death by a man in Pennsylvania. While it's obviously not illegal to wear a clown costume, some police departments have said that wearing a clown costume just to freak people out is prohibited, and many people have been arrested. So, why does this seem like it's such a big problem? 
The clown panic is another example of mass hysteria. Like that when people thought Dungeons and Dragons inspired Satanism. On the bright side, this hysteria hasn't actually gotten violent yet, unlike the Slenderman case, where two girls stabbed a third because they wanted to please a fictional character. Robert Bartholomew, a sociologist at New Zealand's Botany College, stated that the fear over clowns comes from two things a fear of otherness, and social media. Social media spreads information quickly, and that makes us think that the danger is bigger than it actually is. And when it comes to otherness, a clown has that part down pretty well. So, what is it about clowns that is so freaky? Clowns are uncanny. They're sort of recognizable, but not entirely. And we don't like things like that. According to a Harvard Medical School psychiatrist Stephen Schlotzman, who was taught on the psychology of horror, clowns are familiar enough to be recognizable, but weird enough to give you the shivers. We know we're supposed to find them funny, but oftentimes we just don't. This can create a sense of dread or tension that bleeds over into this feeling of creepiness. Clowns have appeared in many cultures, but nowadays it's more common to see them in threatening contexts. Think about serial killer John Wayne Gacy, who dressed up as a clown. Or the movie Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Or Pennywise, the clown from Stephen King's It. You don't really see clowns in those kinds of safe fun context anymore. You see them in movies, and they're scary. Basically, we're now more used to envisioning them as killers lurking around the corner. So, when the real life story pops up, it's easy to remember all the other times we've seen clowns be evil. Everything feels more plausible. Hmm, so... Are all kids scared of clowns? Well, the answer to this one is quite mixed. A study of 250 children back in 2008 found that almost all of them disliked clowns. So, does that make this a phobia or not? Well, fear of clowns is a real thing in the sense that there is a word for fear of clowns which is coolerophobia. But just because there's a word of it doesn't mean that it's legitimate. It's unclear whether being creeped out by Ronald McDonald deserves to be called a clinical phobia. There are very few cases of people who are actually diagnosed with coolerophobia, and it's unlikely that, except in the most extreme cases, anyone would need diagnosis and treatment. The current panic notwithstanding, clowns aren't that common. So, you can just avoid them. So, what does this all mean? To quote the insane clown posse, there are no killer clowns. It's just jackasses being jackasses. And if even they don't believe this, then you know you have nothing to really worry about.